All right, we're live. Okay, let's give people a couple of minutes to file in. Stephanie just texted she's running about 10 minutes late. Okay. Welcome to virtual Borough Hall. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we'll get started now, everyone. Uh, this meeting is called to order in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Annual notice of this meeting was provided to the Home News Tribune, the Star Ledger, and the Highland Park Planet on January 27th, 2021. In addition, notice of this meeting via Zoom was faxed to the Home News Tribune and emailed to the Star Ledger and the Highland Park Planet on August 6th, 2021, and was posted on the borough website at www.hpboro.com and on the bulletin board at Borough Hall, 221 South Fifth Avenue, Highland Park, New Jersey on August 6, 2021, and has remained continuously posted as required by law. As mayor, I preside over this council redevelopment entity meeting and may interrupt, warn, or terminate a participant statement or participation in the virtual meeting if the participant statement does not adhere to the three minutes provided to each participant for public comment or if the statement is abusive, obscene, or irrelevant. Roll call, please. Mayor Burl-Mittler? Here. Councilwoman Canavera? Here. Councilwoman Foster? Councilman George? Here. Councilman Hale? Here. Councilmember Hirsch? Here. Councilwoman Kim Chohan? Special Counsel Bauman? Planner Jim Constantine? Here. Borough Administrator Hover. Here. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the April 13th, 2021 regular meeting minutes? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Canavera? Yes. Councilman George? Yes. Councilman Hale? Yes. Council Member Hirsch? Yes. Okay, we have um, only two items on the agenda for this evening. So I'm going to go to item one, which is Cleveland Avenue redevelopment plan. And I'm going to turn this over to um, our uh, borough planner and our borough administrator and councilman Matt Hale, whoever would like to speak first. Jim? Sure. Terry or Matt, would you like to say anything? Uh, do you want me to just a little context or? Sure, uh, I think that might help. Yeah, so um, coming out of our master plan and land use element uh, project that we did in 2019, as you may recall, we identified several corridors of focus. Uh, Raritan Avenue, obviously being one that's a high priority that we've been working on, but also Upper Raritan, which is on the agenda later, as well as Cleveland Avenue corridor. And I, I believe there were two others, but I can't pull them out of my memory banks at this time. And essentially, um, this is to follow up. We, we want to look at the potential for doing a redevelopment plan that will cover a certain area that Jim will go through in a moment along the Cleveland Avenue corridor, uh, because again, we've identified that area as being kind of susceptible to change given some of the nature of the uses there and wanting to get out ahead of that change a little bit and being able to guide that growth in a way that works for the borough. Um, and so this would be our, um, we want to talk about that now and, and, and look at that scope and maybe coming out of this meeting, uh, charge our planners with pulling a scope together for doing such a plan. Uh, this would be done under the area of need of rehabilitation statute. Our whole town was designated as such a number of years ago, which gives us the authority to develop uh, uh, site specific redevelopment plans. And this corridor, as I mentioned earlier, was a priority area identified in our master plan and in the um, 
land use element that we created. Okay, Jim, do you want to- Sure, can I uh, share screen, please? You should be able to. If you can't, I can show yeah. your slides. <laughs> Let's see, is that uh, visible? Looks like something wants to. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, what it just advanced. Yeah. So, the, as Terry mentioned, the master plan did set a vision for Cleveland and there was a focus. And actually, it was part of a multi year planning effort that started with a proposal at the end of Cleveland to redevelop a former industrial, light industrial track as a uh, girls' school. Um, so that led to community engagement that really rolled into the master plan's effort of community engagement. And I guess something that I said to the council uh, at the start of that process, well over, it was probably three years ago, I said, Cleveland Avenue is a light and partially light industrial zone corridor that's really been in transition for more than a decade. And it's time to really reset the vision. And that's what the master plan did. Uh, if I could go forward one, um, in the master plan, we identified some key issues and I'm not gonna go into those in, in detail. And the, and the corridors pictured, there's some existing conditions on the left and the right and the photos in the center is an aerial that basically runs from the river um, all the way up to the end where Cleveland Avenue dead ends. One thing we did during the master plan was we asked the community, both by way of an online survey and in our open house workshops, um, whether they support change for these specific corridors. Terry mentioned there were several that we looked at. And on Cleveland Avenue, only 6% of the respondents, and we had, I think, almost 600 people that participated in the online survey, um, only 6% said they would like to see Cleveland Avenue, that corridor, remain the same. So there was overwhelming community support or recognition to do something different along Cleveland. Some of the issues that were identified, um, in the master plan process that came from the community were one that the Cleveland Avenue corridor sits with this mix of light industrial, commercial, and more and more residential on the lower end close to, close to the river, um, yet it's disconnected from the north side, very historic and very rich character north side neighborhood that's immediately adjacent to it. So anything that we can do in terms of understanding connectivity and maybe seeing it more as an extension of that neighborhood as we look for improvements. Uh, second was that Cleveland lacks an appropriate mix of uses in terms of really the, the hodgepodge of what's out there now in terms of land use. There's no community gathering places um, or facilities, uh, park or public space that brings the community together. And, and lots of folks I know from the North Side neighborhood talked about their desire to go to something there that was of quality and, and worth going to as a destination. Uh, recognition that there's outdated zoning um, because of the mix of light industrial and professional office zoning. I'll show you that in a second. Um, and the fact that there is a lot of residential that's uh, been developed, particularly in the lower end of the corridor. And all of that contributes to the underutilization of the corridor, the fact that there are numerous vacant lots there um, and that the corridor serves as a high speed traffic cut through and that there's really missing sidewalks, you know, shade trees for character, uh, bicycle uh, accommodations, so forward one. Um, I won't really go into detail to describe those two maps on the right, other than to say that the one on the left, the middle one that has more yellow and gold and brown in it is the existing land use. And you can see along Cleveland Avenue, if you can see my cursor here, there's a real mix of different land uses. And if we go look at the existing zoning on the right, um, each of those colors is a different zone, represents that. You can see that that's also a mix. And so the Cleveland Avenue strategies at, at identified in the master plan were one, to try to accommodate a wider range of uses and to try to make some of those, not just the existing light industrial professional office uses, some other things that the community would like to see. And there were some suggestions. Uh, create a mixed use transition zone to try to better accommodate the fact that the north side residential neighborhood and the R1 zone abuts up against this corridor uh, and some of the lot depths are shallow. Custom tailor uh, infill redevelopment, which again, we'd have a chance to do by way of a redevelopment plan um, as we 
sort of reset the zoning through there, which meets the, the strategies I just mentioned, uh, and then to explore repurposing some of the vacant properties that are there. Um, and some of the improvements for safety and connectivity that were identified in the master plan actually have been implemented as requirements of the recent um, girls school that was approved in the area that you see uh, outlined in brown or, or shaded brown here at the back of the end of Cleveland Avenue, that's 433 Cleveland Avenue. It also included a couple of parcels across the street. And so some of the bike and pedestrian and streetscape improvements that we identified actually in the master plan are requirements and will be improved by the private development of uh, redevelopment of that particular site. And some of the other things that were identified as the vision for Cleveland in addition to the ped bike safety, streetscape improvements, uh, you know, were also to include, you know, some sort of perhaps a small shop, restaurant, um, something that might act as a gathering space, as well as um, some sort of a gathering space that the public would deem worthy of going to. So if we look at this map, this is what we've identified as the potential Cleveland Avenue redevelopment area for this redevelopment plan. It is the areas that are outlined in red. The area at the top left, the end of Cleveland Avenue is where the girls school was approved and will soon begin construction. I mentioned they have a couple of parcels that they own that we put in that redevelopment plan labeled parcel B and parcel C across the street. There's an intervening single family home. There's professional office. Another single family home, a series of sort of light industry, flex space, office uses contained uh, on the other side of the street that really run down uh, all the way to the end up against uh, the area here in block 402, uh, uh, 170, uh, heritage at Highland Park, the American Properties Development. Um, across the street, there's been a recent approval of a seven lot subdivision that Hey, Jim, of, I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt. Could you use the mouse to just kind of indicate where you where, where I, you are? I, for the I am. I don't know why it's not. Uh, it's not. I can see it. I can okay. see it. But I don't, I don't. Oh, I'm, Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm on the lower right down here. You can see that's where I was leaving off. So that's mm -hmm. the approved subdivision. And then we have some vacant lots. We have the Union Hall, Burn Chocolate, kind of bringing us back up to Madison. So it's a real mix within the area in red that we would be, you know, looking at and basically trying to custom tailor um, the zoning and anything that might be potentially, um, that might potentially change, how we can better fill in some of the vacant lots that are there or uh, even tighten up some of the parking lots. Um, and we know that there's a, perhaps a couple of proposals once we start to talk to property owners, um, but this is a chance to continue what we began several years ago and to proactively guide this area. There's not much left of what was formerly light industrial and professional office. And so the redevelopment plan is a chance to really try to make sure we make the best use of that, maximize the rateables that we get out of that area, um, but also recognize that times have changed. This is no longer a large light industrial area. The railroad doesn't service it as many light industrial areas along railroads um, uh, were at one time and the whole lower end of the corridor has changed with uh, prior developments over the past 10 to 15 years. And I think if I could just add to that, Jim, um, another driving force is to get uh, what the council feels is the most advantageous use of that property for our residents, as opposed to being um, forced into things by uh, court settlements as, as we were with the other developments there. Excuse me, oh. Mayor? Yes. I just wanted to mention, I happened to notice that uh, Councilwoman Foster and uh, Kim Chohan have joined the meeting. I just happened to flip through the, the, the attendees list there. <laughs> okay, great. Please let the records note that they are here now. I think I can stop sharing. This is the last map that we had again, just outlining and read the potential uh, redevelopment study area. Okay, do you know how to do that or do you need to? Oh, you did it, congratulations. <laughs> okay, um, 
So just Mayor, just the, just before we get into discussion, I just wanna say, so the, the general, once we get a sense for this being kind of what everybody's thinking, it would be on our planning team to put together a proposal for the creation of this plan, including the public engagement that would be part of that as well as um, of the other exercises that are involved with that study. So, and the outreach. So just to be clear, that's kind of what we'd be looking for some some guidance on. Okay, council members, any questions on the Cleveland Avenue corridor plan? Jim, I'm wondering if you could just um, quickly sort of walk the council and, and through the, the benefits of having a redevelopment plan um, and, and the study necessary for it um, at this time. What the, the, the goal of having the redevelopment plan is to help us have more control or help us be able to, to, to direct what's there. Just if you could kind of broad strokes, make sure that we're on the same page about the benefits of, of, of moving forward with the study in this particular area now. Sure, as I mentioned right now, we have a mix of both PO, professional office and LI light industrial zoning out there, but the uses as they've been developed don't necessarily match um, that. And we identified back in the master plan and prior to that, that that in fact was a problem. We really needed to rectify the zoning there. Right now, if you leave that existing zoning in place, um, we may see something come along, for instance, like an expansion or an extension or an addition of the sort of things that happened in the lower end of the corridor with uh, some of the high density residential that was proposed. And we may be finding ourselves in front of a in front of the zoning board, um, you know, interpreting the master plan and dealing with a use variance application for perhaps a use that the community doesn't want there. So with the zoning, we don't have full control. We certainly have control over what it's zoned for, but we're always um, liable to having to address a use variance that's seeking to do something other than the zoning. A redevelopment plan allows us to go in and to specifically identify the uses we want, more of a custom tailor approach of the zoning for the remaining parcels that are there. And we can then have that supersede the existing zoning and uh, use variances to do something different will no longer be possible. So there's a much greater community control rate out of that, in addition to the other redevelopment tools, the ability to review concepts before you designate a site uh, with a conditional redeveloper and would allow redevelopment to move forward. And then all of the redevelopment tools that you have for greater control that you don't have under the existing zoning. So you have really very little control now other than we have mismatched zoning to what exists and what we believe the community wants. Some of the uses certainly are okay out there, but others, um, you know, really serve no market. So that's one of the reasons that you see this lack of uh, investment and reinvestment and value and tax rateables taking lots. Yeah, I think I think the, the rateables is a key element to all of this. Um, in the past decades. Uh, prior to the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, the municipality really relied on rateables from industry from that area. And those have slowly disappeared because we did not have the right controls in place. Um, and so this would allow us to prevent further deterioration of our rateables and our um, job opportunities within the borough. Um, by creating um, a redevelopment plan that was specific to the types of development we would have there. Any other questions? Mayor, I think Tara has her hand raised. Yeah. So oh, does Matt. Oh, yeah, Matt, oh, Matt has his digital hand, I didn't see that. <laughs> so let's go Tara and then Matt. I just want to, with the redevelopment, we wouldn't be putting any of the businesses that are there out of business, would we? Not at all. Okay. I, I don't think any of us would ever even consider that. Okay. Matt? Can't you uh, unmute yourself? 
the story of my life. Um, uh, Why don't you really mute yourself? <laughs> just all day working in here. Um, thank you, Jim. What is the so? What is the public process from here as far as gathering feedback and kind of getting input? Um, obviously, we've you know the the residents are um, and and how how engaged are the residents in this process so far? Well, I mean, to be honest, we've actually had a lot of uh, community engagement over the past two and a half years. Uh, you know, when we began the the process of moving the girls school redevelopment forward and we were very clear we needed to have community engagement we had a very well attended um, workshop I recall at the uh, community center um, for that and the master plan provided community engagement so uh, at this point I do I do think um, sort of trying to sit down with the stakeholders in terms of some of the property owners and businesses that are there and really try to understand what can we do to better support um, the uh, retention and expansion um, and reinvestment of those existing businesses and other uh, things that may be possible and also understanding if some of the properties are perhaps about to be you know put on the market um, you know getting ahead of that so I think there's engagement on that front and certainly there will be a community engagement uh, component but we've had a lot of input from the community so far. And just to follow up, I, I just uh, and so this 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 really I want to emphasize your point. This is really to 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 discourage and prevent additional um, you know negative impact development over there. Um, I mean, I think I think that that corridor is 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 um, particularly the housing um, uh, on the other side of the track. Obviously, is is, is very segmented from from town. But um, um, I mean, what is our could. Could you kind of sum up what our vision for over for for Cleveland F corridor is? Is it walkability? Is is is, is it a mix of kind of light retail housing? Um, are we going for the neighborhood feel? Yeah, it it, it actually includes a, a bit of those. So in the master plan, we said it was uh, preserve the unique inherent town qualities while evolving to meet current conditions and emerging trends by transforming and enriching the mix of uses along this outdated commercial corridor to support safer, more attractive, and livable, complete streets. Sorry for the long sentence, but we tried to get all those visions in one. So, you know, it does touch on those. And, and folks did talk about some of the things they'd like to see. I'll just give you a, for instance, in the community engagement, you know, we heard residents say, especially because there's a whole neighborhood on those former light industrial lands along the railroad track down to the river, um, that there's no focal point there. For instance, like a little neighborhood corner store was that folks met, a little gathering place, something that maybe could create a little hub that works with burned chocolate and you know creates a focal point gathering place, um, sense of identity for not just the north side neighborhood moving in that direction, but also the residents that live in Lower Cleveland um, that are pretty far from downtown. Okay, uh, Phil. Um, yeah, just to follow up <clears throat> on, um, uh, I, I know that we've had uh, some studies, and Jim showed some of the uh, slides that were related to it about the general discussion. I think it's a really important idea to now connect the area where there's the approved girls school at the end. Um, and we have a longstanding residential neighborhood, uh, which is backed up by a new neighborhood of its own. Uh, we have American homes as well. I think the infill to connect all of that is really important. Um, I agree with the mayor that um, having a plan in place uh, is a better preventative than having it forced upon us if a willy nilly application comes along and we've been subject to that for a long time and finally learned our lessons and we've had a lot of redevelopment plans that hopefully will forestall that in the future. So I, I, would, I would like to see the infill and the study done to really do the connection between the, you know, at least three different, if not four distinct neighborhoods along Cleveland Avenue uh, and get get that in place. Um, it's a study that really needs to be done. I'd like to see it fully developed and, and brought about, 
you know, we've had some of the info and some of the input for over two years. Uh, and I think now it's time to put it together. Elsie? Um, my concern is that I understand that the, the you want to put bet, better control mechanisms in place for that area, but I'm concerned that in no time it's going to be overdeveloped. And, um, and in some sense with being overdeveloped and, and as we've seen that it's just exploded over there and it's quality of, of life is gonna be affected. And then the other thing that I hear um, some of my colleagues saying is that we wanna create little neighborhoods or create um, that downtown Highland Park to create a, a downtown within these neighborhoods. And my concern with creating one of the things, let me step back a little bit. One of the things that was said before was to, it, when the American Properties was going in and one of the other ones was going in that they were going to put some small pocket parks in place, um, put some recreational stuff in place in those neighborhoods so it could get a better community feel. If we are now looking at creating like their own little downtown area, their own little separate communities, we are creating more segregation and that's what's gonna happen. And I thought the, the idea and the plan was to have more of, or, or have our residents utilize the downtown and the existing space that there is. Yes, it may be a little bit a trek of a way, but it's Highland Park. It's, it's, not that, it's not that far away. And if we really wanna build and put communities together, I think it's important that we, we have a town center. One of the things that most towns don't have is what we have. We have a downtown, we have a destination downtown, and it would be nice for people to take strolls, to go downtown, to go to our town center, to utilize what we already have in place rather than creating little pockets of neighborhood that would add more to how segregated we are, are already. So that's something that seriously need, need to be considered. There has been a lot of chatter about developing Woodbridge Avenue for the past umpteen years. Nothing has been done in those areas. Those are opportunities where you can develop and create areas where people would wanna go with what we already have, rather than packing into one particular area that in my opinion, is gonna explode with overgrowth. And the, the resources that you were talking about, uh, communities and having a, a destination and having the intermingling and people coming together, that resource is gonna be stretched thin because there's not a lot of space for it, not a room to grow all of that. But we need to focus on developing what we already have in our Woodbridge Avenue corridor and in our downtown. And to think of creative ways of how to mesh that all in. So uh, when we create neighborhoods, the neighborhoods are going and utilizing what's already built or what we're trying to work on in those particular areas. So Elsie, uh, you raise a really good point. What this plan will do is help us avoid all this overdevelopment on Cleveland Avenue. Because if we don't have a plan in place to stop it, what you saw happen with those townhouse apartment you know, developments that are there and were forced on us and uh, are still are going to continue to happen. Or there's seven new houses going up on Cleveland Avenue now that we couldn't stop because there's no plan in place to do what, what we as a council and community feel are the best things for Cleveland Avenue. So if we don't have a plan in place, then we're at the mercy of developers doing whatever they want as we've been over the last decades over there. Um, so, so your point is well taken. And I think what, what I saw Jim taking notes while you were talking, I don't think what we're trying to do is create another town within a town kind of thing, which is I think what you were describing there. Um, That's but, what I heard. But to have accommodations, just like we do um, in, in other little parts of town that make life easier for residents is something that we can look at. Um, but the, my key concern is stopping the overdevelopment 
that's been going on over there for housing. We, you know, because with, without having any controls, people are gonna do whatever they want. You know, developers are gonna put their bids in and we're not gonna be able to stop them. And, and as far as Woodbridge Avenue is concerned, um, that's one of my, my most exciting and favorite topics these days, um, because we, uh, as you know, um, were um, included now in the state's NPP program, Native Pro Neighborhood Preservation Program, um, which makes us eligible for grant funding to redevelop the Woodbridge Avenue corridor and perhaps even go in a little bit on the um, on the residential side of it as well. Um, you and I have been talking about that since I've been on council, um, and and I can see it coming. Um, we've we we qualify. Um, we're putting together a plan for it. There's a whole team we're putting together to to, to address it, and it's not necessarily building a lot of additional housing there. It's improving what ex currently exists there for the folks that have businesses there, but also for the residents who are always walking in that neighborhood and drawing some other people in as well. Um, so Matt Hale and then Matt Hirsch. Yeah, I just wanted to, to, to add what, to what the mayor said. I'm, I'm excited as well about the NPP possibilities. And I think there's a real fantastic opportunity up at Woodbridge Avenue um, that I think we're gonna move on. Um, just in terms of the, the, the Cleveland Avenue, I think one of the things that this, um, th that we're striving for here is, is, is really to, to try and stop overdevelopment um, and have sort of smart development um, of, you know, it's, it's an area that is, 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 is a mixed use and it used to be light industrial and we have to figure out what's next and what's next isn't necessarily um, you know, a whole bunch of houses. What's next could be some 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 other types of workspaces, some other types of of, of businesses um, that that would bring people um, to work there, um, and then be able to utilize downtown, utilize Woodbridge Avenue, and and all of that. There are some amenities that would be needed if we're able and successful to bring additional um, rateables and, and and workspaces out there, um, but. The, the goal of having a plan like this is, I think, really to, to, to try and figure out what's best that's next. Um, and, and as the area is transitioned away from, you know, light industrial, that's not coming back. And so we have to figure out what is the best possible use for that um, uh, throughout that's integrated throughout the town. So I just wanted to add that. Yeah. And, and I want to remind everyone that what we're talking about tonight is giving um, Jim Constantine the, the authority to go ahead and do a plan for Cleveland Avenue. Um, it's, it's not the actual plan itself. So that's why all of this input from you council members is extremely important now. Matt, did you have your hand up? Now I'm unmuted. Um, uh, thank you again, Jim. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I get that this is, I mean, the, you know, development over there has been haphazard and um, uh, is, you know, it really does, it has, has kind of segregated, it has a segregated, it, it really segregates um, the community in terms of, you know, really creating an island um, uh, off of there, particularly on the other side of the tracks. But um, um, Jim, is there any commitment to, um, to any open space use, pocket parks? Um, and I say that only because, you know, in in um uh you know in the Ethan Lane, Gabriel Lane, Ella Lane, Layla Lane area, um, and on, along Lampion's Court, there are basically um, you know kind of private uh, 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 playgrounds over there. And it would be great if we could find ways, you know, as we do this, uh, to find ways to include um, some open space, you know, but you know, small, you know, scalable open space uh, for the neighborhood and for you know and for the entire. Um, for the entire borough. Are we considering um, park space, pocket parks? Yeah, and that was, those were some of the suggestions that came from the community. I, I think some of the folks that participated in this weren't suggesting trying to create um, anything intense or a separate downtown. It was literally a pocket park was something that we had a lot of hits on. 
folks wanting to see that, you know, might just create a little bit of an identity uh, gathering point. So yes, that, that is one of the things that's out there that we already know from community input people would like to see. And of course, there's the catwalks that connect right. from Cleveland into the north side neighborhood. So there's alternate means to get there. Elsie? Um, again, I just want to um, say that I heard um, you private pocket parks. It's supposed to be a communal space for all of Highland Park. Elsie, that's not what I said. Let I'm sorry. I'm not finish. talking about the other. Let night. me all right. finish. I'm just, all right, but I, that's not what I said. Everybody, everybody, calm down. Go ahead, Elsie, and then Matt, you can explain. As um, was said earlier about the the private pocket parks. We have, I have seen that now when you walk into certain of those communities, people feel that it is their pocket park, it's their personal space, and that only the people that live in that community is entitled to use it. And if that word is so loosely said here, people will hold on to that dearly and think this is their community park, this is their community space, and others aren't authorized or allowed to use it. One of the concerns that I have with the development that's currently over there, most of it is one way, but it doesn't lend itself for say um, people to walk through. You know, so it's, it seems like it's private gated and cornered off. There's no walking through from neighborhood to neighborhoods. So you, some, somebody talk about the, the path that on the north side now those, I forgot the name we just used, uh, Jim, Cat -walks. Cat -walks. That, that links, the catwalk that links. Those those new development don't have don't afford it don't lend itself to that. That's a problem. And if we're going to start looking at what's going to be developed, what's going to what we're looking to develop, what we want to uh, put in those places, I'm all for making it fair and making it equitable and making something that it doesn't become a sprawl of any one particular thing, but also making it accessible to all. And that's what's missing from this. Yeah. So when we say private areas, there should be no private area in a public place. Yeah, I don't think Matt was talking about private uh, parks. Um, the terminology pocket parks are just like, you know, tucked away in an. I am fully aware of what a pocket park is. Okay, good. Matt, did you want to explain? Yeah, so this is the second time I think we all agree, but somehow we're finding a way to disagree in public, which is unfortunate because that's not what I said. I was talking about how existing bad development over there has resulted in basically private development with private amenities. If you go to the end of Lambiance Court, I was talking about how it's bad. If you do, if you go to the end of Lambiance Court, there's a there's a playground over there. I have no idea that that is not a public playground. I mean, it's just not. It's not a municipal playground. It's a private playground. If you go over to Layla Court, you know Le Leia Court over, you know, I, uh, is that the Toll Brothers? No, that's not Toll Brothers. That's um, Holty uh, One. Holty One. I, thank you, Stephanie. Um, there's a playground over there that is not a municipal playground. That's not borough maintained. It's private. So I'm saying that we need to, at all costs, avoid that. That's that's exactly what I'm saying. And as for and, you know, and as for um, uh, and that's why I asked the question of Jim, you know, um, uh, before, you know, what this plan does is it going to is it going to increase this type of segregated development? Or is it going to be inclusive and actually include you know community input in a way that makes it uh, accessible and a benefit to the entire community. So, I mean, I'm sorry. I thought about, I thought I was asking these questions, you know, clearly in order to avoid that. But I mean, Elsie, we, you know, I agree. But I wasn't saying anything bad. I'm saying how there's been really crappy development uh, over on that side of town, and we've missed a lot of opportunities that we can't undo. So this is an opportunity to create public spaces, public spaces um, that are very clearly public. I mean, you say that you know, Lambian's Court. Is, 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 is viewed as private because it is. And in fact, if you go to the end of Lambion's Court, there is a chain link fence that segments off of the River Road apartments, which is, you know, arguably racist. You know, so I mean, you know, they, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, that, that, that's a real issue. So I'm saying that we should avoid that at all costs because they are private and we don't want that. We want a municipal public space if there is public space. Okay. Thank you so much for your point of clarification. Go ahead, Phil. Uh, I have my digital... Wait, wait. Oh, yeah. Stephanie, wait till Phil is done, please. No, go ahead, I have my digital hand up. 
no, Stephanie. Oh, it's on a, it's yellow on a yellow green background, Stephanie. It's hard to see. Go ahead. Go ahead. Phil is letting you speak. Um, so in regards to the parks, so Cleveland has like that whole area, a lot of people there use Johnson Park. If we could look at some other, maybe um, the Recreation and Arts um, Committee can weigh in on something for that area outside of a pocket park, I think would be uh, beneficial to that area. I mean, that area is kind of, it, it doesn't have any characteristic, like at this time, like it doesn't, you have industry, you're gonna have a school, you're gonna have, you have townhomes there, you have mansions there, you have smaller homes there. It, it just, I, I don't know how I feel about this. So maybe if we put some, I don't know, a splash park, I don't know, with something, and then something from recreation and arts maybe can work on that. And I know we love our parks and I'm sorry, but I, everyone goes to Johnson. It's very close or maybe a mixed use park slash something else. I don't know, but. Well, uh, so, so Stephanie, you're, you're, you're actually onto something. Um, there is already a semi-recreational usage there for a baseball what i don't know what to call it a hitting it's a it's a there is a, a, a hitting facility where you can practice hitting baseballs right um and so so that there already exists some type of recreational um usage there so that's a good good point phil you want to speak now yeah just briefly uh, uh, to to fill in on, on, on some pieces as i said before Realistically, you have four or five different neighborhoods on a street that's less than a half a mile long, uh, you know, including neighbors that have lived there for 30 years, houses that have been there for 100. Uh, a property, one property, one residence that takes up one half of one side of the entire road. So we really need to look at this. And I tend to agree a little bit with Elsie because, quite frankly, all of the new redevelopments on that side were forced upon us in bogus lawsuits of claiming affordable housing. And the court masters gave one, two, three, six units out of a hundred for affordable. And now we're cursed with having to fill in somewhere else. You know, what, what am I gonna tear down my house and build 50 apartments on my lot? Uh, but realistically, Jim would have the opportunity to take all of the inputs and, and link all of these together. And, there, and I think we need to realize that they may not be perfect. I also tend to agree with Elsie. Each one of those developments, it's its own insular neighborhood without connection to the rest. Um, I like Stephanie's idea of saying, you know what? One thing that's not basically anywhere in Highland Park, but might be a target there would be the Arts, and, uh, Art, Arts Commission to weigh in and say, uh, you know, maybe that's a good piece. It doesn't take up a lot of space. Uh, but it would fill a very large neighborhood need. So that's what I think what we're talking about now is getting Jim to professionally start pulling together the pieces and the people to look at how to link all that together and avoid those traps. I'm not a fan of park, pocket parts precisely because they turn into little private entities. Um, and, and, uh, and I think what we need to do is try and deal the best with the plans that were already forced upon us in that neighborhood um, and, and do the best we can to salvage it uh, with a, a newer and clearer vision. But at least we have one vision, whether we like all the pieces of it or not. Right now, as the mayor says, anything could go in there. I'm not sure that batting cages uh, is the best use of the properties in any case, but, but that's just my feeling. So I think we need to just, you know, what we're talking about is getting Jim to go ahead with a plan that takes all of this uh, and begins to shape it with a lot more input. Thank you. Matt, Hirsch. Um, I do feel very strongly about a commitment to, to, to light open space use over there. I think that we don't, you know, we have these two beautiful parks in Highland Park, they're county run, um, but they have their problems. 
they have, uh, you know, they are not developed because they because they flood. I mean, and, and let's be honest, you know, that's uh, Donaldson Park would not be Donaldson if you could build on it. Uh, and so that's that that that's a fact. And they are very limited in use because of that. So I do think that have that integrating uh, open space within neighborhoods is is, is is really sound urban planning. Um, and as the third densest uh, municipality in, this, in, in, in the county, uh, we can call this urban planning, I think. Um, but I do want to know, uh, Jim, is, is there any um, is there any um, discussion or thought about accessing Cleveland Ave um, to uh, River Road and Johnson and Johnson Park um, and making that area more accessible for pedestrians and cyclists? Well, as part of the girls school redevelopment, we do have five about 5000 lineal feet of pedestrian and bicycle facility improvements may recall you looked at that they were subject to the redevelopers agreement so i i think one once that occurs along with some of the streetscape improvements there's a lot of improvement that will calm traffic at the madison cleveland intersection that is going to be implemented as part of that redevelopment um, that alone is going to begin to have a first layer of um, traffic calming slowing folks down making the cut through uh, something that happens with more friction and at lower speeds, and most importantly, has a benefit for bicycle and uh, pedestrians. Uh, and back to the point, lots of them do go down Cleveland uh, towards Johnson Park. And I think that will better facilitate that and accommodate it. If you walk through this stretch right now, we're talking about for the redevelopment plan, it's a little bit of a no man's land. You know, you're more likely to see, uh, you know, vacant lots and empty parking lots, um, some truck activity, things of that nature that aren't as community friendly as I think what was identified as an issue in the master plan. Um, borough administrator. I just wanted to also remember, and I'm sure Jim would weave this in, but just to remind council members as well that the bike ped plan did look at River Road. Um, and we know there's some, we, especially you mentioned the other side, of the railroad tracks where we have a lot of new communities and existing ones that have come in and how we can get them more safely into town using bike ped as opposed to just cars is a priority. So we, we have also some touchstones in that document that we can try to weave in as appropriate here, as well as to implement those either, obviously River Road, we'd have to do that in partnership with the county, but those are certainly important projects that we have to factor in as well. And I just want to point out one thing, and I, I, I think I appreciate all of this input, and this is exactly what will feed this plan and also give us kind of, and, and you'll see if we if we miss something, then that's you and the public that will be with us along the way as we develop this, you know, will help us find the balance. But, you know, these are, you know, right now, this is a lot of private properties. So some of this, these would be goals that maybe through a redevelopment, we could find, the opportunity for the recreational space or other things, or we'll have to figure out another way to accomplish that if that ends up being a high priority. Um, but that's the, so that's why it's really helpful to get this kind of input because that's going to get I can see Jim's wheels are turning already um, on some of the ways we can move this forward and to create the parameters and we can specifically say we don't want segregated and we want integrated and you know we can set those values forward at the top of the plan and then figure out the strategies to make it happen. So I just, I appreciate the feedback. Okay, Matt Hirsch. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just, uh, and, and uh, thank you, Jim, for mentioning the, um, the sidewalk and cycling plan. I think it might be helpful as we kind of move forward with this and frankly, other redevelopment areas too, um, is to reference, um, uh, you know, very explicitly reference kind of what is laid out in the site in the cycling and ped plan. Um, because what I found was that, you know, uh, it is all there, that's true, but um, uh, uh, sometimes it's not kind of incorporated into the, into the grander vision, but I think that would be really helpful for us, but, and also uh, the public. Thank you. Okay, any other council questions on Cleveland Avenue? Okay, let's move on to the second topic for this evening. Upper Raritan Redevelopment Plan proposal from LRK. LRK. 
Do you want me to do an intro real quick, Jim? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. I, I, this was more of a reminder item. It wasn't really a big discussion item. We did have a similar presentation from Jim at our prior meeting talking about two areas on Upper Raritan, which is kind of Raritan Avenue as you head toward Edison, kind of after the downtown uh, portion. We want to look at some uh, two site-specific redevelopment plans. And I just wanted to remind council that that is in the works and Jim is working on the proposal. I don't know if you have anything else you wanted to say, but I just, I, I know it's hard to keep track. We have a lot of moving parts and I just wanted to also put that, it's a much more smaller scale tailored plan. We're not talking about a large section. Again, we're gonna tie right into the bike ped plan to uh, Matt Hirsch's point. We're gonna, um, cause it will help us kind of advance that as well as this came right out of the master plan visioning that we did as well. So um, I just wanted to just, it was there as much of a reminder for the for the public as well as mayor and council that that's also forthcoming uh, from, we're gonna see a proposal and we'll see if, I think it's a little bit of a smaller scale than what we're talking about here. Um, however, wanted everybody to be aware because again, we're dealing with areas that are in transition, properties are changing hands and we wanna kind of have a little better control over the, the final outcomes in those areas. So and and just, just, just to clarify, this is the location where the Lubidol was? That's um, one, and then the block up from that, exactly. The the Hodgelick and Morrison building, not that anybody knows of that. Uh, but uh, Jim, would you throw in anything else to that? No, and again, that the master plan identified that corridor as a place where there's sort of antiquated zoning, the old, uh, Basically, the C zoning really creates things like you just mentioned on that property, kind of the strip commercial pattern that we want to end, and we want to try to marry what starts to happen on these first two blocks with setting up our, you know, scaling down of those blocks of Route 27 that there's been discussions with the DOT about for some time that we're ready to move to the road diet and, you know, somewhere we, we go from the the four lanes to the two lanes. Right now, it's closer to the Soldier Monument, but I think the vision and what's been discussed with the DOT is to try to move that towards the Edison border. And so this may be, you know, something we need to look at how the land use and those uh, safety um, and really livable street transformations, which is the vision of the master plan, take place. The corridors that were looked at in the master plan, Upper Arden, Cleveland. Woodbridge Avenue, you know, what's I think very exciting from a planning standpoint is that they're all moving forward in some way, which is important. So we're moving from the vision and the master plan to implementation in those. The other corridor was the River Road corridor, which has a whole different set of issues. And there is challenging connections to get to the other side of the tracks. And maybe we can revisit that as well as we look at these. And I know we have improvements on River Road that will be coming as a result of the Walter Avenue uh, redevelopment. There's some uh, pedestrian bicycle trail improvements on the river side of River Road, as well as that public parking area that provides access to the open space that's a little bit um, north of the environmental center. Okay, Matt? I, I'd just like to quickly add that, that uh, you know the the um, genesis of this, or the one of the the the, the um, proposals uh, up there has gone through the the um, uh, redevelopment steer steering committee. That's a sort of a combination, an informal group um, of the planning board, the zoning board, and, and others. And it's just uh, uh, been a been a good example of I think of um, of, of early input into. Um, uh, how this, how they might turn out. So I think that's uh, important just to let the council members know that um, that there's been a, a number of eyes on this already. There's more to come as Jim develops this, but um, you know the initial part is, has has been looked at in a bit. So thank you, Matt. Any other council questions on Upper Arrowing? Okay. Um, in that case, I'm going to move on to our uh, last section for the evening, the public comment session. Each speaker has three minutes, but may comment on any topic. The borough clerk will monitor any redevelopment topic. 
Um, the borough clerk will monitor the time and will offer a 30 second warning and then indicate when three minutes has lapsed. The session will wrap up by 9 p.m. If you would like to speak, please raise your hand by pressing star nine on your key phone keyboard keypad or select the raise hand button on the application. The borough administrator will announce your turn by reading out your name or the last four digits of your phone number. Please begin by telling us your first and last name and your street address. Again, if you'd like to speak about a topic um, on redevelopment, please press star nine or raise the raise hand button now. Okay, borough administrator, you'll have to know. Yes, uh, we have 30 attendees and five hands raised at this point. Okay. All right, uh, first up is Carl Prey. Uh, please unmute yourself, state your name and address for the record. Hi, it's Mary Forsberg. Um, I, uh, this morning, I got the notice of this meeting at um, 8.22 this morning, and there was no agenda attached to it. I sent an email to Jennifer, asked that she sent it to each of you, um, the mayor and all of you council members. And I heard back from one council person who explained to me what was going on. Uh, I think you need a little more like um, attention to the issues that your constituents have about these things. Uh, I also am really curious to know how you select projects, because I look at the Cleveland Avenue um, redevelopment project and I see burned chocolate, which is one of the actual very successful businesses in town. If you look at, you know, the other track A, Ubreeze and Classic Cleaners are also very successful. And the one that you're looking at on Raritan Avenue is Park Bet. And I know a lot of people who have animals um, go to Park Bet which is part of uh, the redevelopment plan uh, for um, the Raritan Avenue area. I, so I'd like to know how you pick. Why have you never ever considered the charter school, which is almost two acres in the middle of town that could be used for something else. It's privately owned, but you're obviously picking on um, other um, properties that are privately owned. And um, I'd like to know why there isn't, hasn't ever been any discussion about what to do with a charter school. Doesn't, it's vacant property, they never plow it. Nobody parks there, it's two acres. Um, I believe it's bigger than the area where you're gonna put a parking garage right in front of my house. So why not put a parking garage there? That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mary. Um, I just wanna clarify, uh, borough administrator, um, I believe the notice of this meeting and the agenda were posted on the borough website a while ago. Correct. What we, our process is when the agenda goes to mayor and council, it also goes up on our website. We also have noticed the meeting as we do all of our meetings uh, in, in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, which the clerk could tell you better than I, all those steps. And it's been on our web calendar uh, since the meeting was scheduled. The, the, the mishap happened in when we sent the Nixle, which we are not required to do, but we fully embraced the idea of promoting our uh, council meetings and the link to the agenda was missing on the web calendar. So I know that sounds very contorted, but it, this is my long way of saying, we, as soon as we were made aware of the missing link, we fixed it this morning, and, um, but, but the meeting was noticed properly uh, in accordance with the Meetings Act and was uh, notice of the, if, if one had known to go to the agenda section of our website, the agenda was posted timely. So I apologize for the confusion that was caused. We corrected it as soon as we could. Thank you. Um, do we have any other hands up? Yes, we do. Uh, next speaker is coming up as A. Moon. If you could please state your name and address for us and uh, for the record. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes. Hi, um, I'm Alexis Thomason and I live at 155 Exeter Street. And uh, I just wanted to um, say hi. And um, uh, one, one thing just to get it in your, well, a couple of things just to throw it out to the universe. Um, I actually signed on today mostly to talk about Tract C, but um, I just wanted to say in, in hearing you guys talk about the Cleveland Avenue stuff, I've biked around there and it's it would be pretty exciting to have some public spaces up there. And just to get it in your brain, public pool, 
public pool, <laughs> public pool. That would be cool. Um, but let's uh, but let's talk about Tract C, where the farmers market is. Um, I I really uh, would just hate to see that area developed. I think that I think that that whole space should. I mean, I, I believe it's all public space now, and I I think it should remain public space, and maybe. And maybe um, we should develop it as as a park where we can continue to host the farmers market, continue to have a pavilion, maybe have a stage. Um, I know we've had a stage there before, but like a more permanent uh, structure. Um, it's just such it is a town square, and and I hope that you guys will just remember that there's a heart beating in this town, and it's right there. And I hope that you won't change it too much, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexis. <clears throat> Terry, any more hands? I do, Mayor. Uh, just for the record, we have five hands raised at this point. Next up is coming up, Diane Wright. Please state your name and address. Um, you may have to unmute yourself. Oh. Sorry, that was totally by accident. I thought I lowered my hand. Oh, you would like your hand lowered? <laughs> hi, hi, everybody. Uh, Hi. Diane. <laughs> All right. Hey, Diane. <laughs> I guess we'll move on to the next person. <laughs> uh, looks like we have Dan Stern Cardinal. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi, Dan Stern Cardinal. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Uh, 221 Harper Street. Uh, so first, I want to say thank you for all the work you've been doing with the main redevelopment plan and now with this Cleveland Avenue plan that um, I'm seeing. Um, I'm really excited. I was really excited uh, last week, I think it was, to see the full redevelopment plan before the council. Um, and I really like the renders for Cleveland Avenue that Mr. Constantine presented earlier uh, this evening. I, I, I love that style of development. It's exactly right for Highland Park. It looks like uh, the plans that we're putting together uh, use the best practices in the field for pedestrian friendly development and also alleviating the severe housing shortage in Highland Park. Uh, I think this is especially extremely important for the space in Tract C, um, considering we can move those activities just half a block north to the already closed part of South Third Avenue and let people live on that space right smack in the middle of town. So it looks like you're doing exactly the right thing for Highland Park. So I just wanted to say thank you and keep up the good work. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. Okay, anybody else? Yep, um, I have one that's coming up and forgive the pronunciation because it's kind of a long hyphenated. It looks like Malike Baikal Gersoy. Uh, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Malike Baikal Gersoy. Oh, not too bad, okay. <laughs> 111 North 9th Avenue. <laughs> Uh, and um, yes, I also would like to thank everyone and uh, the idea of making our town much more uh, pedestrian and bike friendly is going to be wonderful. And I was wondering if there are some studies done for the uh, traffic that might happen because of the school and because of the recent developments on Cleveland Avenue. And everyone would like to go to River Road, have access to River Road. And that's going to be a problem. I hope you will think about it. And one other um, proposal could be uh, having an underpass or overpass through the tracks to Cedar Avenue or even to Rutgers Livingston campus for bikers and pedestrians so that uh, people can have easier access from uh, Cedar Lane to Highland Park. Thank you very much. Um, All right, thank you, have a good night. You too. Just, just so you know, also um, to the last um, speaker, um, Rutgers University itself is looking at a transportation plan that does include some of the things that you've been talking that you just mentioned. Um, so, so there is there is hope in the future for alternate ways of getting around between Highland Park and Rutgers. 
time we have Pam Dorman up next. Please state your name and address for the record. I'm unmuted, yes. Yes, you are. Pam Dorman, 423 South 5th, um, Highland Park. Um, so uh, a couple of things. Um, with the professional buildings that are on Cleveland now, I'm assuming that the, um, like the doctor's offices and stuff are renting in those buildings that somebody else owns those buildings. And I don't know whether with this redevelopment, it makes, it, it, it changes the, the property value for the owners of those buildings. And if that ends up having an impact on the professionals who, um, who are renting in those buildings, I, I just think it's something to be certain to consider because um, I think a lot of town people go there for PT and for all kinds of things. So um, I, I'd hate to have those people um, shut out uh, because if their rents would. Um, somebody mentioned Track C with the farmer's market. So that I understand is owned by the borough. Am I correct? Yes. Right. Whereas I don't think that the borough owns any of the properties on Cleveland, um, but we want to have an impact in terms of uh, having a redevelopment plan. Um, so, the, so the issues end up, I understand, being different. There's no way other than property taxes that the borough can generate any income off of Cleveland Avenue. Um, whereas if they built on their own property, there are things we can do. So, uh, right. So there just were, were, were pieces I was um, concerned about. And I, I know that you've addressed the traffic issue when you were talking when with all the discussions about the, the girls school, but um, I, I'm wondering if at some point there's gonna be consideration of a, a traffic light down at the end of River Road in Cleveland a little not attractive on the one hand, but um, I don't know whether because of increased traffic and increased pedestrian traffic, but that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Um, next up is coming up as Matt and Diane Feldman. If you could please uh, state your name and address for the record. Hi, it's, it's Diane Feldman. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. For the record, I am here too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I know you do. I wanted to comment on the downtown redevelopment plan for tracks A through D. I went through it and I had comments in a few sections where I think there are items that need to be updated, such as it refers to the Blue Horse as currently operating, which it no longer is, and has not for close to two years. So that should be updated. But there's another section section 5.7.15, where there's a large section discussing accessibility. And I know that the town has done some work recently to update their wording, referring to people with disabilities and access for them. And this document is not at all in step with that. It uses the word handicap in multiple places. And I think that that whole section needs to be reviewed so that um, it's consistent with the other work that you've done on borough documents. I did have a question about a pocket park. I think it's track B, the pocket park that you want to put between Park Place and 
Raritan and talking about how there's a different difference in levels. And if I'd like to get, it doesn't have to be now, but some understanding of the access for somebody through that pocket park for someone who cannot use stairs. Okay. 30 seconds. Okay. Okay. Diane, thank I, you. I just want to say thank you to Diane for both of those. Those are, are excellent pickups and we appreciate them. We'll double back on them for sure. Yeah, I have one other question. And it's when you talk about Cleveland Avenue and you talk about the track that's been approved for what's a private school. Everybody continually refers to this as a girls' school. The truth is, it's a private school. I'm trying to understand why the emphasis on it being a girls' school. Was there anything done in the process of approving this that was dependent on that? And I guess from a more gender neutral perspective, would it be more appropriate to just call this what it is a private school? That's a very good point. It, um, the, the builder of the school um, has let us know that it will be just for uh, girls, um, but there's no reason why we have to use any um, uh, sex references um, in as we describe the schools. And I think calling it a private school is a very good suggestion, Diane. Okay, thanks. And the development plan is called 433 Cleveland Avenue Plan, which is a very exciting title. But yeah, but I think that's <laughs> a really good point taken. <laughs> okay, that's all I have for today. Thank Diane. you, Diane. Thanks, Diane. Thank you, Diane. Uh, Mayor, I do not see any other hands raised at this time. All right, then. Um, if that is the case, then um, I'd like to get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, everybody, thank you for all your work on this, and thank you also to the residents who participated. Good night, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.